Welcome to number one crude mistakes. And um, yeah, I had a plan there. But this is going to be a good hook. <laughs> Welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes with Glenn from Number One Projects, KJ from Crude But Efficient, and myself, Forward, from Behind the Mistakes. Fresh back from Maker Central, guys. How are you doing? Oh, it's great to be sleeping in your own bed again. Yeah, it's great to be back. I'm not quite sure that fresh is uh, the right word. Whose <laughs> bed have you been sleeping in? <laughs> in the hotel's bed. Yeah. So what you been up to, you guys? You done anything over the weekend? No, I can't think of anything. No, a blank, basically. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Woke up on Tuesday and felt hungover, but I haven't been drinking at all, so it's it's weird. I've been drinking, so it's probably my <laughs> my beers you've been feeling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you get that when you post a podcast with someone for long enough, then you. You split the alcohol differences as well, <laughs> but I mean it, it's it's a bit anticlimactic in that way because we just recorded a half pint uh, in a hotel room, uh, and here we are back, separated by uh, a literal ocean. Yeah, yeah, it's sad. It was a, a really happy, nice thing to do, recording it in the same room as you guys, <laughs> apart from KJ. The- Apart from KJ touching us to start out with, that was a bit weird. But other than that, it was great. Yeah, because I, I thought you were going to say it was a happy ending there to the uh, Maker Central, but yeah. No. no, I only touched him in the beginning. <laughs> That's not how consent works. <laughs> well, I stopped when you said no. Isn't that good enough? Yeah, that is... That's actually decent of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, KJ. So, Good man, is that <laughs> make your central blues? I mean, it's it's a Tuesday, but it is a it's a blue Monday, at least for my part. I, I don't think I've gotten to the blues part yet, because I, I spent all of Monday traveling. That felt like Sunday for me. So starting coming back to work today felt like a monday but it's a tuesday so i'm up re- i'm still yeah <laughs> i'm i'm too scrambled to to get any feelings i feel oh we hit a little bit of traffic on the way back where the hellish journey it took us 10 minutes extra so we were about an hour and a half <laughs> all the way home <laughs> fuck you <laughs> oh yes i mean at least we uh I think it was uh, Pierre who said it's it's nice to go early to the airport because uh, Birmingham airport is a pain in the ass. And yes, it was, but going four hours early is a bit overkill. It's it's not the most exciting airport to hang around no. in, <laughs> but at, at least they, they let us leave. <laughs> so uh, even got through uh, Skipball Airport without any major questioning. Oh. <laughs> you weren't questioned on the way back, at least. <laughs> no. Oh, he's bringing his kid back. That's nice. We did the right uh, decision there. <laughs> <laughs> Only the number one crude mistakes podcast could start at the end. <laughs> and we're going to work through. We're going to go into Sundays at the Maker Central and Saturday and then Friday night and and there, that or... we should, should we start chrono- chronologically? Do Maybe we... it makes sense. I don't know anymore. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Quentin Tarantino, so beginning at the end and then sporadically jumping <laughs> between topics and storylines, <laughs> that works for me, but <laughs> might be a bit uh, cumbersome to follow along on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, but who were you at the first one on site? Yeah, I sure was. Um... <laughs> ah, I can't even remember that far back. Um, no, uh, I traveled uh, with my six-year-old. We, uh, she had uh, her birthday on the 17th. So it was a bit weird leaving the country because it's also the national day um, 
So, um, but still, there was a lot of people traveling that day, so we weren't alone at the airport. And um, we had to fly through Schiphol, a relatively large airport, with just one hour to spare to reach the connecting flight. So we got this text message saying that, all right, you just show this to any uh, airport security personnel and they will let you in front of the line. Uh, so we just ran along to catch the flight. And then, of course, we got held up in uh, in customs because um, I was traveling with a child alone without the mother. And that's uh, probably uh, a thing we should have known about. But, yeah, we did not have any papers. So uh, <laughs> almost uh, had to return from Schiphol Airport. But uh, we managed to uh, charm our way through. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it strange that the only country where everything else seems to be legal, kidnapping a child isn't? You just yeah. think, oh, it's fine, no problem, I'll carry on. <laughs> I mean, it would it would have been nice if they asked the questions at Oslo Airport, like, all right, you're traveling alone. Uh, do you have uh, the acceptance of the child's mother to take it abroad? Uh, but no, you had to go to Schiphol. But I think there is a reason behind it, because I met someone on the way back and... Uh, people struggled getting the other way as well because they did not have a return ticket to show for, and that's also a thing. And, of course, after Brexit, uh, and they are not a part of the Schengen Agreement either, so that is the border for the EU. So they have sharpened ah. up their security a bit, so uh, you aren't allowed to leave or enter without actually having a return ticket and a plan for leaving again or if you have a work visa or anything like that. So I think it's because of that. But, I mean, we have traveled everywhere, and uh, the kids got uh, dual passports and uh, never been an issue. And then we got held up at Schiphol, and uh, I needed a signed confirmation from my wife that it's okay and a copy of her passport. And when I asked about it, if this is a standardized form or is it just for the Netherlands? No, it's a standardized form. All right. Uh, everyone I've talked about it, no one has ever heard about it. It's not stated on any web page anywhere. Um, <laughs> and of course, today, I can take as many Xerox copies of my wife's passport as I please. And they have no reference to her signature. So I can just write that letter of confirmation myself and just sign it and slap a copy of the passport. So it's a bit, I think it's like, it, it's like they're putting it on for a show. And then, of course, it is kind of nice that they actually ask questions. Are you allowed to actually bring your kid with you? Because you do hear these horror stories that one parent just leaves the country with one of the children and never returns. But, of course, when they did not get a hold of my wife, because, I mean, it's a parade in Norway on that day, so... I couldn't reach her on her phone. And then at some point they said, ah, oh, it's probably okay, just go through. <laughs> so like, What's the reasoning behind that? I mean, <laughs> so yeah, but I, I never understood airport security and probably never will. But yeah, we made it to make it central one day before the show started. So we had a day walking around Birmingham city center, buy cake, eating pizza, having a blast the night before and, a lot of people came rolling in during the Friday, so there was a bit of a, a pre-show before the show on Friday evening. So, yeah, it's a great experience and a great first day. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. What was Birmingham yeah. like? <laughs> no comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on, yeah. Well, I mean, it was nothing to write home about, <laughs> even less to talk about in a podcast. Um no, I th we took the train in and we we found the main street, but yeah, it was nothing special. And of course, the the same shopping mall structure and shops that you find in any major European city. So yeah, yeah, just went in and yeah, it's a lot of people here who don't like it. Let's go back to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> we got the cake. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the funniest thing about the entire stay in Birmingham city center is like, I have promised my daughter a cake since it was her birthday. And we walked past this fancy cake shop 
and of course we popped our head in and said do we have to eat here or can we bring it with us no 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 you can bring it with you and all right we, we picked one piece each and it's like one of these stores that like they take your cake and almost like a ritual they carry it and they show it to you like it's your firstborn kid and is this the cake you want <laughs> yes and they put it in a box and like they they put the box together and tie a ribbon on it and then they have a separate bag and like come on we're just gonna eat that in the bed of a premier inn just cut the, <laughs> like cut the show i mean just put the <laughs> put them in a brown plastic bag and <laughs> give them to us uh, but yeah it was nice so you got in next in your kj yeah yeah my my plane was a bit delayed so i landed about six o'clock and when i finally got to the nec because getting to the nec from the airport for some reason is hard if you don't have a car and i like the stubborn Swede I am, I I, I like to walk <laughs> everywhere instead. So when I finally got there, they were the make with maker stand was more or less completed already. So I got there just in time for the group photo beforehand. <laughs> so I came here like, yay, we're done. I haven't done anything. So that was, I think, st- stage one of my uh, feeling uh, feeling like a fraud. Uh, <laughs> but then we went, went went back went to the hotel and checked in and then I met met up with Hovar and and we we went and uh, and grabbed something to eat a bit and, and sat by the by the lake the only nice thing in this uh, this hellhole that is the Birmingham? NEC. <laughs> yeah, bur- the outskirts of Birmingham. The, the, only, they spent, the only thing they spent money on was this. Is this? I guess it's a fake lake or it's a real lake. I don't know. Uh, but it, it, it looks nice. Uh, uh, and then Howard had to be the responsible parent and, and put his daughter to bed. At least that's what he said. Yep. He just wanted to go to bed himself, I guess. <laughs> uh, so then I went off to the Hilton and met a lot of people. And that was uh, really nice. Uh but I start, uh, started feeling that I was a bit behind because I went in there and met the, the three northern makers who were sloshed already because <laughs> it was Pierre's birthday. <laughs> uh, so I, I felt a, a bit behind when it come, came to alcohol. Um, uh, but I, I talked to a lot of people and that was really nice. But in the, in the wee hours, I felt a bit uh, outside everything. So... Going back to the hotel, I was, oh, what am I doing here? Oh, I'm, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm a fraud. Oh, I, no. felt, <laughs> I felt really, really bad for, for some reason. And, and afterwards, I realized it was, I was just too tired to be, to be social. Yeah. Uh, so I should have gone to bed like an hour before. Um, <laughs> uh, but the next day, uh, everything uh, became a lot better. Already at breakfast... Uh, uh, I sat down with uh, uh, Jamie Reader, uh, and and at the table was Ian, the the robot hand guy. Oh yeah, uh, who had made his own uh, prosthesis out of metal. That is, <laughs> it's the it was the coolest thing in the entire show, and to see it up close and get to hold it and hear him talk about it, I was, I got, I got really back in the in the positive. <laughs> So that, that was the cure for depression, actually meeting nice people who do cool stuff. <laughs> that hand was um, just mechanical genius, a little bit steampunk, but it was just yeah. absolutely fascinating to see it up close. It was brilliant, wasn't it? Yeah. And I mean, he, he is a machinist. So I guess, I mean, if you come to someone and say, yeah, I, I can do metal any way you like, look at this hand. I made it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a, a functioning me- mechanical hand just with, uh, with gears and... Uh, and everything that's yeah it it blew my mind several times every time i saw it so yeah yeah that was fantastic that was that was awesome <laughs> who did you have breakfast with about anybody anybody we know sorry i didn't who did get you that. have bre- who did you oh. have breakfast with anybody we know well um i found kj there and pierre so uh, we sat down with them and then uh, of course steve came stumbling in and Yep, but they have been sloshed uh, the day before, so he just came uh, and just uh, stared at Pierre and like mumbled coffee. 
<laughs> and then Pierre, <laughs> yeah, and they just went over to the bar. <laughs> I think they needed a couple of hours to like boot up. We met them over at the NDC, and they, uh, I think they had a, a pitcher of coffee each, and started to feel alive again. <laughs> <laughs> I am not surprised. <laughs> But be, before we start on the next day, you, you said you, it's a struggle to get to the NEC from the airport. And yeah, we followed your route, basically, and walked along roads not meant to be traveled by mankind, at least not on foot. But <laughs> on the way back, uh, we, of course, walked through the NEC, and then I found some signs that said, airport... And I just followed them, and I came to the section of the uh, NEC where we previously went to the left and down some stairs, and we walked outside, and it, it's a pain in the ass to get to the airport. But instead of doing that, I just saw some people just heading straight ahead, and it said airport that way as well, but not very lit up signage. But when we came there, it like this monorail that takes you to the airport. So you're bas- <laughs> you can basically get to the airport without like getting out from under a roof. So from the corner of the NEC, monorail, airport. So <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> next time I'm going to do that on the way back. I'm not going uh, through the roundabouts and uh, <laughs> counting dead rabbits and whatnot along the roadside. <laughs> well, the rabbits are one of the key features of that, that area. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's uh, if you ask, uh, it's, it's funny when we got home again, uh, like everybody's asking my uh, daughter, like, uh, how was it? And, oh, we saw a dead rabbit because when we went there the first day um, or when we went there in the evening to the, the Premier Inn, we saw a lot of rabbits. Uh, and then when we went back to the NEC, we walked together with Rasmus uh, Lewin and uh, a friend and uh, we stumbled over a dead rabbit where some crows or something and started picking out the eyes and that is the highlight. So she's still talking about that <laughs> dead rabbit without the eyes. <laughs> so yeah, spending a lot of money, taking her on adventures uh, and whatnot. And uh, yeah, dead rabbit should have been enough. Uh, I mean, you can see that at home. <laughs> <laughs> or basically, no, we can't because we don't have rabbits. But I, I remember that from also the first time I went to the the UK. I mean, it's dead rabbits everywhere. I mean, you can uh, <laughs> use it as distant measuring. I mean, uh, uh, how how far is it to the next village? Uh, uh, it's uh, ten dead rabbits and uh, and a squirrel. Oh yeah, so just just around the corner then. Yeah. <laughs> Not that funny, but it, <laughs> at the same time, it was. <laughs> the sad truth is, when you get a little bit more rural like I am, it's uh, dead deer and dead badgers. <laughs> the old rabbit thrown in. <laughs> so they grow in size the further they out do, you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, it's. I can't it's, even deny it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's kind of good. Because unless the, the population of rabbits would get out of hand and they grow larger, you, you saw what happened when they brought rabbits to uh, Australia where they had no natural predators. I mean, they grow to these giant, huge kangaroos. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, if you see a rabbit, hit, hit it before it gets that. too big. Yeah. I did not know that that's where the kangaroos came from. <laughs> As if they're just an evolved rabbit. It must have been. The more you know. Yeah. <laughs> the more you fuck about. The more you... <laughs> oh, I don't think anybody was expecting this rendition of Maker Central 2024, were they? <laughs> I think we have a title for that episode already. <laughs> I think we're po- we have several so far, so yeah, let's keep going. Glenn, when did you get there? I got there as planned for 10 o'clock on the Saturday morning, having spent Friday night crying, basically, wishing I'd booked in early <laughs> to get there on the Friday night. Why didn't you come over? If you're just like an hour away, it's... Never even crossed my mind. 
never even crossed my mind. To book it. I was, certainly wasn't going to drive over there for the night and then drive back and then drive back the following morning. But uh, I would have. Would you? Yeah, if, if I were an hour <laughs> away, I would not book a hotel. I would just... Yeah, well, while, while we'll everybody was go. getting drunk at the hotel, I was getting drunk at home. So, <laughs> yeah, Anyway, I got there at 10 o'clock, driving down to the NEC, very, very excited and a little bit nervous to uh, meet Havard for the first time, to be honest with you. Uh, knowing I'm going to have to spend the whole day with him, the weekend. But it all turned I'm out great. It's what a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, it took, it yeah. took all my concentration and uh, <laughs> <laughs> to be nice. Yeah. First impression well, is important, yeah. they said. So I just, uh, yeah. I got there. I was waiting outside the entrance at opening time and I rang Havard and said, where are you? He said, I'm two minutes away. I said, I'll wait. 15 minutes later, he'd not arrived. So I thought, oh, there must be a different way in. <laughs> I went into the show. Yeah, so I went to the uh, organizer's office to get my badge and uh, found Havard in there playing with the lady. I've got a ticket. I really have bought a ticket. Let me in. Let me in. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, uh, that was a struggle. Um, I've, I made sure that I've actually resent all the airplane tickets and so to my own email so I have them readily available. Uh, and of course, <coughs> I didn't do that with the tickets for Maker Central. And on the way over, I just uh, was scrolling on my phone trying to find the, um, the tickets and I realized I don't have any emails past March and I bought my tickets in February. And then, of course, tried to call my wife to see if she could just log on to my computer because I have the backlog of all the emails there, but she wasn't at home. So, like, what do I do now? And I, I think I spent 15, 20 minutes just sitting outside and desperately trying to see if I have stored them or if they've been temporarily saved in a download folder or whatever and then fuck I need to buy new tickets so I went into the ticket office and of course I pushed a six year old in front of me like oh we have tickets but, but yeah everything <laughs> uh, <laughs> turned out brilliantly they have a log of all the tickets so uh, yeah, yeah sure <laughs> but we, when, we got, when we got him out of there once he'd uh, made himself legal again we uh, pretty much walked straight through the hall into the quietest corner of a coffee shop and sat there for chatting for about an hour, didn't we? Yeah, I think. Yeah, we we almost didn't go into the uh, arena at all. I think we were <laughs> like, "All right, where do they serve coffee?" And then we found the <laughs> corner, the furthest away, I think. Yeah. At the entire Maker Central, and uh, yeah, that we were nice. talking, drinking coffee, and my six-year-old was blowing uh, bubbles in the cafeteria. And uh, <laughs> I don't know what they put in those, but we have said that don't use them inside here because they <laughs> they leave some sticky residue, I think, is uh, going to make you glow in the dark if you use it too much. <laughs> <laughs> they were crazy good bubbles, though, wouldn't they? Weren't oh, they? yeah, they best bubbles burst. ever. <laughs> Be careful not to inhale them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then we... Uh... When we left the coffee shop, we uh, came out, had a slow mill around. I don't think I saw much of the show, actually, on the Saturday. It was all talking to people. We were. I think my next memory was hanging around the Make With Maker stand and uh, Cormorant Craft Moira tapped me on the shoulder. Yeah, so we chatted to him for a while. Then me and Havar took him off to the pub and had a drink <laughs> and, chatted, <laughs> and chatted for about an hour. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, that's... Of course, this is the first time at Maker Central's for me, but I, yeah, we walked around a bit and looked at things, but you just keep stumbling on to nice people that you only know online and talking to people who has been there before. I mean, that's the main reason why people go there. I mean, it, it could have been any other event. It's just the one that everybody like, this is where you're going to meet up. So yeah, it's nice that you have something to do or look at, but it's basically just finding some nice people and go have a pint. <laughs> Definitely. And, and, it's, so, it's and really... some had more pints than other. <laughs> <laughs> As usual. I mean, it's really nice when, when you, when people come up to you and I say, so I say, hi, and you look, to, oh, who are you? And I say, oh yeah, it's me. And I say their hands. Oh yeah. Okay. I've only seen your hands on the internet. I have no clue what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. I really like yourself. <laughs> 
it's when they introduce themselves by their name and not their handle. It's like, and <laughs> still don't know. Yeah, everyone should wear their maker logo on their shirt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that for next year. Uh, I had that thought this year as well, but I never got around to do it. But I'm gonna make my own badge, which is gonna be the logo with the QR code. Because, uh, like, when we talk to Ali Spagnola in the bar, it's like, all right, uh, where can I find you guys? And trying to describe that and fumble with your phone, it's so much easier to just, oh, here's a QR code, and you just scan it, and you have all the details. I've done that at work on various conferences. Instead of having a business card and, like, handing them out, I just, here's a QR code, scan that, and you have all my contact details, and, yeah. Yeah, well, that's why I put the QR code on my new sticker. And your face. And my face. <laughs> and yeah. the handle spelled out as well. Yeah, your badge, your new uh, uh, sticker is absolutely fantastic, KJ. I love it. Makes me yeah. smile every time I see it. Yeah, I, I got really excited when I when I got the idea. and oh, I wonder if it works. Hmm, I haven't seen anyone else do this. Is it because it's a stupid idea or it doesn't work? Yeah, no, it's a, it was a nice sticker, actually, for... A lucky few that actually got one. So uh, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, Good oh, idea. I, I thought <laughs> I'd given one to you, but then I I realized uh, on the Sunday when when Glenn said they had gotten one. Oh, did I give it one? I did not give one to Howard, did I? Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> but I mean, if you said you had, I would totally believe you because I think in the reception. At the Premier Inn, we talked about stickers and just making sure that we had our bags with stickers or something like that. And I think you showed it to me. So, yeah, it, the transaction just didn't take place, did it? Yeah. Just forgot about you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot I, about a lot of people. I, I didn't so, cry yeah. very much. I, I, mean, I spent uh, the whole time caring for you and socializing with you and KJ just forgot all about you. Hey. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I had him Friday evening, yeah. So I did. I did at least I did something in this uh, uh, shared. Uh, what's it called? When you have a kid together. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I did did work most uh, most e- the weekend and couldn't take care of him. But yeah, I, I think- did what I could. <laughs> I think the next noticeable thing to happen to happen on the uh, Saturday was we were hanging around the Jenga area, and Hobart's daughter was playing with the Jenga, and this guy came in with uh, two kids and his wife, and you could see the kids weren't really interested, but he was just getting closer and closer, <laughs> <laughs> and then the next minute he started chatting up Hobart. <laughs> I, mean, I, I I have no like spatial awareness for other people, so we were just standing there talking about the Jenga bricks and uh, the kids were playing. And uh, yeah, in my peripheral view, there was a family there, and I like, oh, so- sorry, sorry, I thought they wanted to play with the Jenga bricks, so I just took a step back, and he like took a step back, and I like, oh, oh, so sorry, am I still in the way? So no, you're uh, you're Hova from behind the mistakes. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's my first ever recognition, like in real life, from my uh, YouTube channel, which was amazing. And uh, what a lovely guy and family. And uh, yeah, talked about the hell quarter for, yeah, I don't know, 20 minutes or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Brilliant. I didn't know whether to laugh or video it. <laughs> I thought it was. That was hilarious. Well, it's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's one of a, a few limited amount of uh, subscribers. So, yeah. But I I was so perplexed. I, I didn't even get around to ask, all right, what's, what's your name? So he might be one of the one who actually comments on the videos. And I, I would know. <laughs> so. <laughs> so if you're that that guy, please get in, get in touch with with us. Yeah. We we'll want to know you, who you are. We'll give you a mention in the uh, in the podcast notes as that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but another thing, I um, I think it was <laughs> after I left, I I got a picture from Glenn, and it said, uh, "This is Horvath in ten years." And that was it, KJ. <laughs> oh, it was KJ. All right. Um, and it was a guy, red beard. Uh, about your height, yeah, about my height. Checkered yeah. flannel shirt, two 
daughters, I presume they were his daughters, and yeah, like it. the exact same cap <laughs> that I wore at the show. Uh, I showed it to my wife and she, she laughed her ass off. Uh, like, I mean, did you talk to him? No, no, no. I just got the picture. I have left. So, all right. But do they know who he is? Do they have his contact info? You should talk to this guy. And like, I, I can't really see what we could talk about. But of course, if I were there, I'd be like, we need to have a photo shoot. But I mean, still, do you want to be the after in the before and after shot? I don't know. But um <laughs> So uh, yeah, yeah. She, she said, like, oh, maybe he listens. I mean, you could put the picture up on some group and probably be able to find out who he is. But, <laughs> yeah, do you, do you want to hassle? I was <laughs> I was stood next to KJ when he spotted him. And KJ's like, look at that guy. Look at that guy. Go and take his photo, Glenn. Go and take his photo. So they can't. But the stalk, this guy in KJ's there with his super long arms. Extended <laughs> out. <laughs> Just got him, go go gadget style. <laughs> yeah, I had to do some creative. Oh, I'm filming this over here, and I, now I'm turning around. And uh, yeah, I was maybe not as sneaky as I thought, but I think I got away with it. But I, I actually, uh, I did that after breakfast at the Premier Inn. Um, uh, Rasmus Lewin were at the table besides me eating breakfast, and on the table. Uh, across that again, there was a, a random guy. I uh, don't know who he is, but I mean, he could have been the identical twin of my father. And like, I need to take a picture of this and send it to my sister. And like, look, look who I stumbled over. I've <laughs> been dead for now eight years. <laughs> so, uh, like, trying to keep my phone up while I'm talking to my daughter, pretending I'm showing her something, and then I need to focus on this guy. But the camera was, of course, always on, like, trying to focus on the two guys sitting next to us. But I want to find that person in the middle, in the distance there. <laughs> um, yeah, but I got a picture of him and then uh, sent it to my sister, and we had a laugh. Um, but I didn't realize that, that in the distance behind that again... <laughs> were a blurry Steve. So uh, <laughs> when I showed the picture to people like, uh, you see that guy in the background? Oh, you mean Steve? And I, yeah, it's Steve. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I have a picture of Rasmus Lewin and then my uh, father's double ganger and then a blurry <laughs> Steve in the background. <laughs> Not sure Come if on. it was because it was out of focus or if he was hung over. <laughs> Could be both. <laughs> Could be both. Yeah. I mean, it's really nice to he to hear what you've seen uh, of the show because well, I was uh, tied uh, mostly to the make with maker stand the entire time uh, with, of my own free will. So it was <laughs> uh, it was really nice to have something to do. So I don't weren't climbing the walls. But then again, I didn't have time to be that social. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, Did you I've... have people coming up to the stand and saying hello to you? Uh, some people. Yeah. So, yeah, people were still social. <laughs> yeah. Any memorable ones, KJ? Or... Well, I mean, I, it's... You were useless, actually. I kept coming up to you and saying, who's that guy? You're like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> I'm shit with names. <laughs> uh, and I feel like, I mean, it was... At the stand, it was mostly the the, the usual crowd, so I, I it would feel bad just to mention some of them and not all of them. Uh, yeah. But it was a lot of people, uh, a lot of Norwegians, uh, especially. It I wanted like... to talk about the Norway army that was there. <laughs> <laughs> so many. Like at one stage on the Sunday, my daughter said, uh, "What's that guy talking <laughs> with? They, uh, he's got a slightly different accent, Dad." So that was a, it's Norwegian. There's lots of Norwegians here, aren't there? Yeah. <laughs> I counted to eight, I think, that I know of personally. Yeah. Uh, and I think we're three Swedes, so it, you, you felt really... <laughs> Comfortable. <laughs> no. <laughs> Quite the opposite. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice bunch of guys, the uh, Norwegians and the Swedes. They're all lovely. Respect to a few that are listeners. So we've got RVA Design. 182, I think his name is um, Roger, Roger Anderson. Yeah. And um, who else was there? Martin, maker Martin Berg. Yeah. He was an awesome guy. Yeah. Big beard. Yeah. And then uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to say his name normally, but nobody will recognize it. 
and Ola Skitterin, also known as Ola Skitterin. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget the Anosaurus. Oh, yes, yeah, the dinosaur guy. Dinosaur. Hey, he's a good guy. He's apart definitely from, a good guy. Apart from pointing out how old I am, he, um, <laughs> <laughs> he did bring me a bag of smash, which was lovely of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. Yeah, when we left the uh, Jenga game after Hobart's fanboy experience, I, I walked around the corner and somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, are you Glenn? I said, yeah, I'm Glenn. So I listened to you guys on the podcast and it was uh, Shamey from uh, McKenna Workshop Creations. And uh, he was a great guy, Irish fella. And yeah. um, me and Hobart ended up going to the coffee shop with him and his family and sitting down and chatting for about an hour. <laughs> a bit of a theme, wasn't there? <laughs> it yeah. sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> like a proper nice guy, both he and his wife, and uh, they brought yeah. their baby with them. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. This, the yeah, same nice. with uh, Mr. Malt, uh, brought his uh, tiny Malteser as well on, <laughs> was it on Sunday? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it is yeah. a true family event. And I mean, it can be, yeah. <laughs> KJ saying shut up about the family shut up about the family <laughs> <laughs> there's always next year <laughs> <laughs> but then, then you can't volunteer to uh, stand in a confined space the entire day I guess but uh, yeah we talked oh. about it in the half pint me, me and Glenn are not the uh, <laughs> the volunteering kind but uh, <laughs> uh, I might have yeah, I might have to eat my words there. I had uh, a chat with Smog Dog, uh, who uh, is actually the the brain behind Scarpet Festival in here in Norway, and uh, I, I've had a couple of beers, and we did talk about next year's the Scarpet Festival in here in Norway, and I am not you mean sure this if I said that. He, <laughs> I mean, we could continue the chat with regards to uh, helping out. So kind of. <laughs> We should just keep quiet about this, I think. I don't think anybody needs to say this out loud. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> going to edit that out. It's my edit this week. <laughs> Not volunteering for shit. <laughs> I thought it was weird you, you wanted it in uh, uh, writing audio, so to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But now, now I, I kind of understand why you both... Uh, uh, weren't really that interested in socializing in the evening because you were all, all socialized out during the day, talking to people. And <laughs> My my voice still isn't back, completely back to normal. I've had a sore throat since I left there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm a bit lower than I usually am. Yeah, but it was it was great. It was, it was really, really nice talking to everybody. It was fantastic. Yeah. And um, the uh, party that Vectric put on for for all the creators afterwards was just fantastic wasn't it yeah it's brilliant yeah yeah a shout out to them that's a really good experience i think that that was the highlight actually on saturday <laughs> yeah i mean oh, it is wow. it's a really really nice venue when you when you can more or less chat to any any of the makers who were there uh, that's yeah it's great you were you were pretty good for actually that KJ. You you were good at starting conversations and then uh, not knowing what to say after that. And me and Havard rescued you and chipped in. <laughs> <laughs> I want, didn't want to feel you. Uh, didn't want you to feel left out. And I know that how horrible it would kick my ass if I didn't include him in that conversation. <laughs> so, yeah, especially I mean, I, with I you was... standing just an hour, a meter away. I uh, actually, uh, I, I spotted her on her way around and like, all right, she's going to end up to our table. And uh, of course, uh, before I got to rearrange the words I wanted to say, KJ just like uh, Jack in a box, like, hey, best pally. I was like, all right, we have an in. So it's like <laughs> lean over and start talking. <laughs> it wasn't like I, I hadn't practice that in my head for the last month or so <laughs> okay when i see you alone then i i can but yeah alice magnolia is really cool and she was the one of the people on my list okay people i want to talk to nice show it was, yeah. a, it was a short list uh, but she was definitely one of them 
So yeah. that, was, that was really yeah. nice. After we'd had it all night, uh, after we'd all had a nice conversation with her, I went up to the bar and she followed me over there. And I was chatting to her there and seriously starting to run out of things to say. And <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Reader came up just at the right time. And I said, oh, hi, Ali, meet, meet Jamie, the cleverest, one of the cleverest men in the world. He also has a podcast. They're just on a break at the moment. And then they started chatting. I said, oh, just please excuse me. I came back to you guys. <laughs> I had to come back to my comfort zone for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so fantastic. I mean, Julius, oh, this, this is a, a YouTube star. It's been on YouTube for 10 years and I have a million subscribers. I'm just going to pawn her off to a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to. to uh, yeah, but that's that's uh, actually yeah. a decent skill to have. Know when to uh, like end a conversation, uh, and not letting it go to that awkward silence where you're both yeah. like, uh, "So, uh, yeah," <laughs> and then <laughs> like desperately start to searching for like anyone yeah. else to grab onto. So yeah, yeah, you don't want to get to that stage where I've got a cat. Have you got a cat now? I've not got a cat. Okay. Dog? No, dog. <laughs> Things just get weird. <laughs> I'm a <Yeah>. gardener. <laughs> just start start talking Latin to people. For for some, it will work really well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's also very nice. To at some point, I needed to admit it that all right, I my daughter was my emotional support person, so. <laughs> Yeah, at some point I said I had to be the responsible adult and go back to the hotel. And, I mean, she could have kept it going for a couple of more hours, but I just, <laughs> all right, and started to use up my social battery. And, uh, of course, there is something about being the most sober man in the <laughs> in the room. At some point, the, the, there is a too much gap there. So there is, uh, yeah. Any conversations are really not fruitful for any of us, so it's time to leave. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's that's a good thing. But this event, because no matter what your alcohol tolerance level puts you, there's always someone in the same <laughs> span you can talk to, yeah. from yeah. Uh, the straight age uh, Simon. Oh, I think he, at least. I mean, he doesn't drink much, at least, all the way to Welsh Thomas, who is basically a keg on legs. <laughs> but that... at the end of it. That's one he's of the just, really he's no different, though, is he? Uh, it's it's just <laughs> a bit louder, perhaps a bit. Yeah, but he's just his usual lovely self the whole way through. Doesn't matter how long he's been drinking, how much he's been drinking, he just yeah. remains the same. Maybe the volume does go up a little, but not much. <laughs> yeah. It's it's interesting. Yeah, but yeah. that's that's also the brilliant thing. You have a mix of very odd people in the best possible sense of the word, and of course. There, there is no one that bats an eye if someone says, all right, I have to leave now because my battery has run out. I mean, everybody said, oh, yeah, nice meeting you. See you tomorrow. And uh, there is no like, oh, you should have another drink and like anything like that. So it's very, yeah. I mean, you can have someone just crawling on the floor, floor being sloshed, but they're still respectful of, uh, oh, okay, you don't drink. That's, that's fine. <laughs> Perfect. I'm still going to lay here. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was... Uh... I realized that at, at that Vectric event, which was an open bar, you can drink as much as you like during that time. And I didn't see anyone who was who had drunk more than they should. Mm. Everyone was... Re- I, mean, I, they- I did. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but we'll not mention names. <laughs> but they were still perfectly lovely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's... I mean, no, no, yeah. 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 They were all, all lovely people in their own way. So I think yeah. that's... It's a nice crowd, this. Yeah. And as you say, everyone is very. I mean, we're all civilized. aware that we are weird. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we we allow each other to be weird. I think as way. the uh, I think I mentioned in the half pint, but um, as the Vectric event was winding down, people are saying, are "You coming to the? Uh, are you going to come to the Hilton Bar? Are you coming to the Hilton Bar?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there." Knowing damn well, <laughs> there's no way I'm going to the Hilton Bar. <laughs> I was knackered. <laughs> Absolutely talked out and tired, so we're, we're say we headed off in that direction after they kicked us out of there, uh, got to the Hilton entrance and just diverted away <laughs> to the Premier Inn. <laughs> oh, yes, I was left alone once more. But but this night, I, it was yeah. this was nice all the way through. So it was, it was really fun seeing, uh, uh, what's his name, James Bruton, uh, the, the robotics guy, uh, dance uh, some kind of 
yeah, I didn't, the dance where you throw people all around, all around the place. Yeah. Like a swing dance? Yeah, some kind of swing dance. Yeah, okay. Uh, with uh, Daisy Tempest, uh, the, um, the luthier. She oh, builds okay. guitars. Right. That was really <laughs> fun to see. I think I got it on video. Um, <laughs> Uh, speaking of getting things on video, even though I was stuck at the Make It Maker stand a lot of the time, I did manage to to film a bit uh, uh, during the show and everything. So I, I realized I have 187, no, 86 oh, wow. video clips to go through. I was absolutely rubbish at documenting anything. <laughs> you were just and, talking to people. <laughs> and I said and I said to you both, you know, remember to get loads of photos and tag, tag the <laughs> podcast into the Instagram. And um, I was no no better than you two, really. <laughs> and Havard, you were the worst. It's like you travelled, <laughs> you, you travelled twelve hundred miles, and the only picture you took was of the premiere when you got there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I, yeah, I, it... I did think about that, and I, I did take some more pictures, but it was basically of uh, me and my daughter and sending it back home. So there's like didn't think about the podcast at all like yeah. all right maybe this should be a nice one but no well i, I blame my lack of social media uh content during the show to the fact that well i, I blame brexit once again because my phone plan does not uh, cover the uk so it's oh, no. i think it's eight nine quid for 250 megabytes of that da- data so I'm, oh, I save that to the important stuff <laughs> instead of stupid videos on the interwebs. So the, will there be a video of Maker Central from you this year then? or Hopefully. Yeah? Nice. But it's going to take a while. Yeah. I think it was about two months after the event last year, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah. I, I'm not going to set a date. He's made a YouTube video on what now? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you want some distance to it so you can look at it with roast into the glasses. I, I got that idea because, uh, of course, uh, uh, we met up with um, Mellow Labs, Thomas, uh, our first guest. And he was really working the show, going around interviewing people and filming and so on. So he's like, <laughs> he was... Uh, compensating for what we lacked um but that got me thinking though because i mean there is a lot of makers at maker central it's well it's kind of in the name um yeah and you have small booths uh, where people sell things and of course it's not maybe the most grandiose of businesses so i mean at, there should be an acceptable level to get a stand and then I started thinking well we are a bunch of people who hung around and I saw the make with makers which have their own like separate area smack in the middle like a home base we could do that with a podcast and then we could just uh, talk with uh, all our previous guests and say we're going to have a number one crude mistakes uh, booth it's going to be like a VIP so we can have like uh, catch up interviews with previous guests and of course it's it's basically just an excuse to have a separate area in there where we can have our own <laughs> chairs and drink coffee, and so we don't have to go outside somewhere. We can well, just you, sit down there, plonk, and then other people can come. Yeah. Well, you, you said this is a joke in the half pint, and uh, because you said that in the half pint, that's been taken a little bit a step further today, Avard. And there are ideas or little sparks happening where we're. Maybe thinking of having a stand for podcast, all the maker podcasts together. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> over with ca- to share. <laughs> yeah. So, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to work. <laughs> yeah. You kind of just volunteered. Because <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I actually think that's a great idea. I think it'd be yeah, lovely. But, yeah, yeah. That would be, I mean, you have a. Of course, a, a larger field of audience and guests and so on. And there are several, I mean, we're a lot of people in the same community doing podcasts. So, yeah, it would be nice to do some sort of stunts. But, of course, the the details are still in the pudding. So, yeah, we'll see next year if anything <laughs> pans out. <laughs> see, so, but, I mean, there were a lot of podcasts yeah. present there. So, and I would prefer to do some kind of timeshare, I, I feel, and not be the single point of interest. Yeah. Definitely. 
And since you were talking about Mellow Labs as well, um, on the Sunday, I mean, I knew Mellow Labs was doing a live stream. And I know a live stream is live, the clues in the name. But um, he whisked by me at one point and uh, dragged me along. And for some reason, I forgot that it was live. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, it was Glenn unfiltered. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it went great. <laughs> you can watch that back, can't you? Yeah, I've yeah, seen it did. It. Yeah, yeah. I haven't. Uh, I, I saw it when it released, but I haven't had time to watch it. Yeah, I've seen your clip as well, KJ. You got you early on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's quite nice. He's put some timestamps on everything now as well. Ah, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah I'm going to. Uh, so when I get a good. couple of hours over, I will check it out. So next month, perhaps, <laughs> it feels like at the moment. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it is like, I feel like a lot of people went there and had the same strategy. Uh, we are here to socialize, so we're just hitting the pause button on all the social media stuff. And then yeah, on the mm -hmm. airplane, on the way home, people like, all right, I got <laughs> two days of backlog. I need to get off my chest. So, I mean, the two yeah. last days <laughs> have been hectic. I mean, there are posts yeah. and tags and messages. <laughs> and yeah, so it's, it's hard keeping up with everything, uh, at least today, uh, sitting in an office and actually having to work. And my phone <laughs> is like over at the table and people start looking at me that's what's going on over there is it is it pleasuring himself with something because that's a lot of vibration i've got to admit i mean for the first time in my life the last couple of days i've had too much social media <laughs> even you had a limit who yeah knew? i did <laughs> especially i think it was on sunday evening i mean i got home and um, first thing I did was crack open a beer and come in the office and edit the little um, half pint that we made. And, um, you know, the phone was binging. I was like, no, come on, just give me a break, guys. It's literally just been a really lovely full-on weekend. <laughs> Let me just <laughs> pause and think about it. <laughs> the, the, the Sunday was pretty much the same, but uh, with fewer people at the show, wasn't it? It Felt seemed like, like it. fewer people, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it was, yeah, it was nice as well. It was nice. That was the day that um, Michelle and Lily, my family, joined us at the show. So they, they had a blast. They had a, a go on the make with Maker Stand and made bath bombs with Soapy. Yeah. She was just absolutely fantastic with everybody. What a lovely lady. Yeah, they were. We, yeah, we, 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 a really good experience. Yeah. There were a lot of, of, uh, of great instructors at the Make It Maker Stand. I can say that because I wasn't one of them. I was just helping out with anything. I didn't do anything <laughs> actual work. I did everything mm -hmm. that no one else had time for. So, yeah. It, just... it didn't seem quite as accessible as last year, the Make With Makers stand. There was, um, I know last year when I was there, we, we just wandered in, wandered in a few times and got to make a keyring and stuff. And it didn't seem quite as easy this time. But you, you're always busy. So I think it's probably it worked better for you guys. Yeah, I mean that was one of the problems last year. That yeah, you because in the, it's not obvious from the get go what you can do there. Yeah, uh, so we had to try and not have too many people just mill about and yeah. So yeah. maybe it wasn't that as as friendly in that way, but I mean I think mm -hmm. we had two hundred and forty five people that we know of that did some, yeah. did something. Yeah, and then yeah, there was a lot of. Uh, of extra that we didn't yeah. account for, uh, so it was. Yeah. It went really well. wasn't a criticism on your guys' parts. I think you all did a great job. Yeah, we just needed more space, more tables, more yeah. people, more material, more everything. Yeah, <laughs> to meet the demand. <laughs> yeah, but that that's a good thing, I think, and of course it's because it was a, a popular uh, event, so of course. Uh, it's sad for those who had to wait or could not get in because the lists were full. But I mean, that was a good measure to make sure that the people who actually got to make something actually had the follow up they needed and they felt they got the attention. So I think for everyone who got in and actually made something, got a really good experience out of it. It, it seemed like it at least. <laughs> yeah, my, my family certainly had a great day there. They uh, saw plenty, enough to keep them busy all day. So, yeah, definitely a good family event. And, you know, I probably could have spent another three days there <laughs> just chatting <laughs> to people. It was nice. 
Yeah, but you felt that at, at the end of the of the Sunday, people were running out of steam. Yeah, yeah but you guys carried on for another day, didn't you? A few of you. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, well, yeah, but the steam was long gone. <laughs> it felt like. <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, Sunday evening when we were packing uh, everything up and. Uh, uh, we went to Nando's, uh, a really, really nice restaurant. I hadn't been there before. It had a big, long table. I think we were like, we ended up being like 15 people or something like that. Oh, nice. Uh, just sitting around, having a real lo-fi time. Almost. Yeah. I mean, if someone had put a do- doobie over us, we would just fallen asleep <laughs> uh, in a big pile. That was the feeling. Uh, <laughs> but then we just uh, went off to the to Hilton and sat down and had a Really, really low, <laughs> low fi, uh, yeah. lovely, uh, lovely time just sitting around talking. Uh, I ended up sitting beside a hacksmith. He right. was also really tired, but we, <laughs> we talked a bit about his uh, latest project. That he yeah. and, but it was, yeah, it was really nice and, and slow. Yeah. And, and then everyone just walked back to the Premier Inn as a, as a whole. I think we were like, 10 people walking together and that was really nice to do. oh nice yeah. yeah the show ended really nicely for me with um yeah. the scrap wood um challenge results oh yeah because was... michelle's friend who she went on the rubio day with red kite workshop she went she came third oh was she the one with the dinosaur yes yes yeah nice. which was fantastic and then the guy that won uh last year came second oh, okay yeah and then the magnificent Andy Pugh came first and we all gave him the biggest cheer. <laughs> he had his fan club with him, definitely. <laughs> it, was well, it was well deserved as well, I think. It was. It was a fantastic piece. Yeah. And, uh, and then the whole hilarity of the fact that he'd won a bandsaw, a big box of screws and some other things, and they don't send it to you. They literally give it to you there and then. <laughs> <laughs> Here, carry this home. <laughs> So glad I didn't enter that contest. <laughs> I got a twenty-five minute walk back to the hotel, mate. What am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> well, you can ride it. <laughs> Need a hell of an extension cord. <laughs> so you're off the hook, Havard. No, but nobody rang in with the code. I am. Yep, nobody DM'd us with the code for the Jenga block. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, nobody called with the code um but yes then someone did but i think um that's for the half it. pint i think this is a nice uh way to end it before we continue that conversation and uh but i just want to say uh a, a very much uh a thank you to everyone especially everyone listening who who came up and chatted to us uh, old, uh old friends and you yeah uh, it was really nice meeting each and every one of you. And if we missed anybody out, it wasn't on purpose. It's just that there was so many people, so many lovely people. So, yeah, it was great meeting you all. And you, Havard. You sure was. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, it was really nice being at the <laughs> same you, place at the same you, time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was really nice. And, yeah, recording that half pint in the same room. I mean, it is a bit anticlimactic and going back and... Uh... Yeah, but then again, it's it's nice being missed. I mean, uh, if we would just keep it going, it uh, would be boring after some point. So yeah, I think it's uh, nice to have something to look forward to again next year. Definitely. Yeah. Or Scotland Festival in half a year. So yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. So everyone listening, have a lovely evening. See you in uh, half point. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. <laughs>